The Shining is a film directed by Stanley Kubrick, a masterpiece and in short, a film that is great for multiple viewings and interpretations. Interpretations of this film in this video are fully mine and original and not a derivation of other people's analysis on YouTube or beyond. So why is The Shining still to this day worthy of our viewer engagement? Many reasons, and the more important one is as follows. The effect of spatiality on the psychology of characters is real. The interiors and exteriors play a key role in this film. I would say, even more than the plot and the characters themselves. The symbolism of the individual who gets lost in the abundance of space that is unused and superfluous through the duration of the film becomes really noticeable for the observant viewers. Spaces and the treatment of spatiality are one of the great sources of horror in this film, like perspectives in painting that achieve specific impressions and experiences only in the film medium. At the beginning of the film, the family enjoys moving around nature, i.e. a trip to the Overlook Hotel. When they arrive at the hotel, they are satisfied with the interiors shown to them. Wendy later enjoys an impressive maze with Danny that leaves all of us impressed to this very day. Danny often drives down numerous hallways in the hotel, and that, hallucinating or not, doesn't leave him very thrilled, rather worried. The room in which Jack Torrance writes is a real parody of a study, as it is more of a concert hall rather than a study. No wonder such extra space makes Jack a dull boy. Later, Jack explores the hotel and searches for something else, new, different, but he is not so lucky. Hallucinating or not, he comes across a bar in another huge room, in fact, a real hall that, it seems, was once used for big receptions and balls. Again, space swallows the characters, so to speak. Later, as Wendy runs in fear with a knife through the hallways, she looks around unsure of what to expect. In a way, Kubrick assigned, or I could say, added a supernatural attribute to the interiors and exteriors themselves. The spaces create discomfort, no matter how visible, spacious, and seemingly non-threatening because they are also massive and hypertrophied. And that is why the unbreakability of many elements and their synergy that make up the overall impression of horror make The Shining a great film and true artistic masterpiece. The characters are not as proactive as they believe they are. And that's one of the reasons why many of us are worried when viewing this film. Because most of us are not as proactive as we believe we are or we could be. We subconsciously know that if the pressure was immense, we could be persuaded to do many things, to intimidate others and behave badly, and the worst possibility of all, to intimidate and push ourselves over the edge, into madness, because that particular interpretation is very favourable to this film. If the spaces are supernaturally energised, the possibility is not ruled out that the three characters simply cannot withstand that kind of pressure. Spaces symbolically swallow them, engulf them, eat their personalities even. They move through them, run away, clash, but they can't move away from them. At least, not effectively and sufficiently. Interestingly, the last scene in which Jack Torrance is shown in a photograph of the 1921 ceremony, 50 years before the events of the film take place, relatively confirms this point. In a way, the overwhelming supernatural spatiality of Overlook Hotel really swallowed him, ate him, digested him, incorporated and integrated him into itself in a really grotesque and incomprehensible way. Also, in a symbolic way too. Anyway, it is possible that all three characters are hallucinating at the climax of the film and hallucinating exactly that which is very close to them, specifically action and trouble that is familiar and understandable to them. Imagine this as human beings accustomed to the perception of the world in three dimensions plus time, suddenly transferred to space with twelve dimensions. They would feel strange and their brains would have troubles to, if at all successfully, reduce a new unknown perceivable phenomena to an everyday practical level. And this is what the characters ultimately do. They give up the unpleasant wonder and they experience catharsis, which is the pinnacle of their experiences however weird and dangerous they are. It is not surprising that they do not succeed in this alone, each for himself, but in mutual interaction with each other, as is the case with human beings. 
So what does seemingly happen when things go to hell? Jack is lost in fantasies about achieving some long-standing and archaic gentlemanly status by which servants in livery address him many times without hesitation. Danny gets lost in fantasies about his imaginary friend and two strange girls his age who don't understand him or even try to establish verbal contact with him, which girls and women often do to men in real life. Eventually, Wendy thinks that, as expected by her deep fears, Jack got drunk again and continued to abuse her and Danny. So in a way, everything happens according to the worst expectations of the main characters. Very frightening, isn't it? Especially because, no matter how ambiguous and weird, it is realistically presented. Therefore, this is why the effect of spatiality impacts characters, which quite effectively worries us and makes us even more intimidated and horrified by this movie.